we were quickly trying to decide which way we were going to leave, but we were still kind of trying to figure it out. It was just a, very confusing at the time. Then all of a sudden, we start seeing a tremendous amount of people running, and we decided, okay, we, we can't be last out. So we started running, and all of a sudden, when, um, when we were about to hit the, the exit, I remember the entire floor just shaking, and that's when the plane went through World Trade Center too. You are about to embark upon the great crusade to meet this mounting aggression. And make no mistake about it, good will prevail. So it all started in 1999. Um, I interned at Morgan Stanley, and it was a great time because during that time it was the, uh, the era of technology stocks, and the market was on a tremendous run. So I fell in love with the industry. Uh, that was 1999. 2000, graduated from University of Miami. My goal was always to become an attorney. And, um, but I kept getting a call from someone at Morgan Stanley. At the time, it was Dean Witter, Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. And they wanted me to come back into the business and go into their training program. And so I decided to give law school a year, did great. But then I pivoted into the industry and it was the best decision ever. So the firm would put us up for three weeks and it was the best program out on Wall Street by far. And um, so we went up to uh, New York for three weeks. That morning, I believe there were some elections in the city. So it was quiet. Um, you didn't really see a lot of police officers out on the street. And so we would typically get to the World Trade Center by via bus, um, I wanna say by 7, 7.15. So at the time, Philip Roth, which was our chief uh, technician at the firm, so he, he was the person in charge of just teaching us about charts for the market. And so he, he, uh, he ended his session a bit early, and at the time, uh, my very good friend, uh, Bill Van Skoyek, was our MTA, which is the person in charge of the program. And he said, uh, we have 20 minutes, um, Make sure, make sure you get some coffee and uh, don't don't leave, don't leave the the building because uh, the session is going to start uh, very soon and you don't want to be late because if you're late, pretty much you're gone. I mean, they were pretty strict, but at the time we wanted to take a break. It was uh, my first time um, alone in the city, so I, I wanted to take a look at uh, what the city had to offer. So I just went downstairs with a couple of folks uh, to go grab a cup of coffee. And so when we went downstairs, that's when um, uh, we, we walked out of the turning doors. We walked out and that's when somebody w which was walking by, it was, it was bizarre, someone with a book bag, a uh, young person walking with a book bag said, uh, get back in the building, get back in the building. And um, at that time, you, you, you started to, to see that there was debris coming down and it was because the first, the first plane went through World Trade Center 1. And is that the tower you had been in? I was in World Trade Center 2. You were in 2. Yeah. So we start running back into the building and um, half of us are going one way and the other half are going the other way and then some of the debris was falling onto the building and was hitting some of the folks that were behind us. And I just remember looking back and a piece of, it was either a piece of the building or the plane just completely flattened out a, a taxi cab across wow. the street. And that's when I knew that there was a major issue. The person I was, uh, we were trying to get back into the building, but we just, one person kept, we were pushing this way and another group were, were pushing that way. Every, everyone was panicking. And so um, the guy in front of us started punching through the glass to try to get us in. And uh, he, he finally punched through, we got in and just mass confusion. And I remember my roommate at the time stating, that was a plane. I, I heard a plane going through, but hitting the building. And I said to him, I said, Alan, you, planes aren't allowed to fly around, you know, that close to the buildings. It, that had to be a, a generator or helicopter maybe hitting the, the building, but it was the plane. And what's interesting there is that, um, <clears throat> at the time, I left everything upstairs. I mean, my phone, wallet, and um, 
I told I told my roommate I, I have to go upstairs I have to go grab my stuff all my personal belongings up there and uh, and he said uh, no no don't do that don't do that I'm like I'll be right back so I walk up I walk up to security and they're like well there, there was an accident World Trade Center one you're cleared you know we're, we're safe you can go up go upstairs I mean uh, take the elevator up and uh, he pulled me aside again he said look do me a favor, please. If you're gonna go upstairs, you ha you have to say your prayer with me. And I, I've known him for, I think, 48 hours. And I didn't want to be rude, so I said, "Okay, uh, I'll I'll do it. Fine." I was more concerned about about my personal belongings, and uh, and being late to class, right? Uh -huh. So, um, he grabbed my hand, said a prayer. And I don't know what it was, but something just completely changed my my my, my mind, and um, I decided to stay. And so, as I reflect on it throughout the years, if I would have taken that elevator up, right, because we were you connect on on the 61st, and I believe at the time we were on 64, um, I probably would have been in the elevator shaft when when the second plane hit. So what did you do after you decided not to go back up? We were just trying to figure out what the next move was. We were still confused because we knew something happened outside. And, um, but inside, it was, it was calm and security again was very assertive that everything was fine. But then all of a sudden we started seeing folks running down the stairs and panicking and running out of the building. And that's when we decided that, look, we, we, we need to get back to the hotel. Um, so, something doesn't seem right. And so we started uh, quickly walking through the lobby of the World Trade uh, well, We were still in World Trade Center, too. And we're in the lobby, and um, we're walking out, and all of a sudden you start seeing a lot of folks running. And, and I'm assuming that all these folks were seeing what was happening in World Trade Center 1, and so took the, you know, the uh, emergency um, exit and just wanted to get out of the building. So we, we started walking a bit. Um, we were quickly trying to decide which way we were going to leave, but we were still kind of trying to figure it out. It was just a, very confusing at the time. Then all of a sudden, we start seeing a tremendous amount of people running. And we decided, okay, we, we can't be last out. So we started running. And all of a sudden, when, um, when we were about to hit the, the exit, I remember the entire floor just shaking. And that's when the plane went through World Trade Center too. I remember running out. And the first thing I did was I stopped and I looked up. And that's when I first saw both, tires, uh, both towers on fire engulfed in fire at the top and was there more debris coming down because of that there was impact yeah and so i ran across the street and i looked up and um it looked like it was snowing from all the paperwork from the two towers um they were just all coming down slowly it, it was amazing and um i remember across the street there was um a work van and had the the AM radio was all the way up and so I'm, I'm listening to it while I'm, I'm observing observing what was happening and uh, the person on the radio was stating that he thought it was a, um, an attack a terrorist attack uh, because two airliners went through both towers and um, but I remember just everyone running out of the towers um, pure, pure panic, um, people running over people, just trying to get away. So it was an uh, astounding moment. And so I was observing what was happening. So the towers were on fire. Um, and then unfortunately seeing folks, um, jumping off, off the building. You witnessed that? Yes. Yeah. And, um, I, I just, I'll never, I'll never forget someone standing next to me saying, look at them jump out like flies, they're jumping out like flies. And so 
I was still in in the background that that working van was there and that AM radio was all the way up. And I remember one of the comments that they made was, "Look, those are those are two jets that went through the building, and I'm sure there's a significant amount of fuel in um, in those towers." And at that moment, I decided that I, I needed to leave. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I don't know if the, the building was going to explode, whether it was going to melt down, but <clears throat> I wanted to seek shelter. And so the firm, um, at the time, the training class uh, was divided into two different hotels. And um, I decided I'm not taking the subway. I'm not getting in the, in the cab. I'm just going to run all the way up to Lexington. I think it was around 55th. That's a good yeah, hike. Shelbourne. Yeah, that's a, it's a hike. But at the time, <clears throat> I, I wanted to find a pay phone to, uh, to, call, to call home to let everybody know that I was fine. What is your mind even able to process the reality of watching people jump from the windows? To this day, I, I still reflect on that, and it's a tough moment for me because um, especially on, on, on the anniversary every, every year on that date, um, I reflect and, and sometimes I ask, why, why me? Why was I spared and, and other folks not? Um, so very difficult um, just seeing folks making the decision whether they were going to fortunately burn alive or to to jump, um, but a after that, um, after listening to to the work van, I, I decided I needed to 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 call back home because I'm I'm sure that my family was watching it on TV, and uh, and I know that they thought that I had passed away. Is that what they told you when you called? Yes, my my mother, <clears throat> my my stepfather at the time. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to become an attorney was because he was an attorney by trade back in his own country in Colombia. And uh, he walked into uh, my mom's uh, office and said, uh, are you seeing what's happening on the news? And um, she said, he's, he's in that World Trade Center. And she's like, I, I can't believe what I'm saying. And you know, that, that's, not, that's not what I want to say. And he said, don't worry about it. He, he'll, I'm sure he found, I know him. He found a way to get out. Pure luck. But um, I'm really glad that I called. I, I was able to find a payphone, and, and the line was very long, very, very long, because um, all towers were down, uh, com uh, telecommunication towers were down. And so um, I'm happy I called because once my mother saw what was happening on TV, she picked up the phone and she called the branch, the local branch in Florida that I was um, working out of. And um, she asked for the manager. The manager was conducting a sales meeting at the time. He exits the sales meeting, gets on the phone with my mother, and she, uh, she said, are you seeing what's, uh, are you watching what's happening on the news? And um, he was briefed and he said, don't worry about your son. I know exactly where he is. This is right after the first, the first plane went through. He said, don't worry. I know exactly where your son is. He's on uh, World Trade Center 2, the other building, and he's right in the middle of the tower. Uh, the middle of the tower. Uh, that's where we have our, our classes. Hangs up. She has a sense of relief that she knows that I'm in the other tower. And then a couple of minutes later, then the plane went right through the second World Trade Center. And that's, that, that's why she thought um, I had passed away. So I'm very happy that I was, I was able to make a, a collect call and got in touch with her and, um, and just put them at ease. I can remember to this day, I hang up the payphone because there was a big line behind me. Hang up the payphone wish the person behind me good luck. I walked, I, I started running up the block. I kept looking back. I wanna say three minutes into, into, three minutes after that phone call, the first tower went down. 
What are you thinking? Thinking about all the people that passed away. At that point, you had no idea if the rest of your class had made it out. Correct. Fight or flight, and it was at that moment flight, and I wanted to get back to the hotel as quickly as possible. And, um, but just thinking of all the folks that, um, my peers, uh, other folks at Morgan Stanley, and just everyone in general, um, just devastating moment. And, and it took me a while to get back to the hotel, but once I, I got back to the hotel, that's when I had that overwhelming feeling of sadness because for the first time in my life, I walked into this hotel and some of my peers that I had spent the last two days with were all in, uh, crying and um, hysterically and, and couldn't keep their, their emotions in check because uh, they thought that they were going to die. It was later on that night, there was, uh, there was a briefing, and um, that's when they, they told us that the, the class was fine. So we had over 300 uh, trainees in that class, again, largest in, in Morgan Stanley history for wealth management. And so um, made us very happy, which, which was a sign of hope, although it was... Um, one of the most difficult moments in, in our in the history of our country. New Yorkers always think that there there's hope. Um, they fight for their cause. Tough, demanding, but yet at the same time, um, extremely supportive throughout the entire uh, event. Um, just seeing the way that the country rallied was incredible and we've said this before but we'd love to see the country you know act like that united all the time for many years it was uh very difficult for me to to talk about it and and again it went back to the premise of why me and so a after after a couple of years i started to feel a bit more comfortable sharing the story with family members it took me a while and um but as 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 every year went on i felt more compelled to share my story which which is one of hope one one of the things that um i really enjoy is when when i meet someone someone new um they uh They'll give me some feedback sometimes and in the business setting or or just uh, new friends if we move from one city to another like you're always in a good mood right you're always in a good mood and and if i don't know them that well i just tell them you know life is short um blessed with a wonderful family uh, i've always worked at one firm and life is good but as I get as I get to know the person <clears throat> and close family friends and, and colleagues, now they know that the reason why I'm always optimistic and the glass is always half full is because I'm on borrowed time. I shouldn't be here.